together. So this next part is super easy. It's kind of very free and fun. You just need basic paint colors. We're using acrylic. And you can just approximate, for each of these color areas, you just have to approximate what the middle color is. So, in this yellow area, for example, there's yellow and like a burnt yellow and an orange yellow, maybe even a purple. So, we'll just choose a middle yellow, which is sort of the overall color of the area. And we can come in with that. Down here it would be a lemon yellow, which is a bit different. This is more of an orangey yellow, and this is more of a greeny yellow. And then in this area here, we can put a green, and close to a black here. Hi, I'm back, and I fast forwarded so that I could show you what I had done, at the same time as you being able to see where we're going at this point. So, I can show you how to mix colors as we go. But it's easier if you can see what I have done. Okay, so here's our photo again, just so you have a better look at it. Without glare, hopefully. There. You can see the lines that I have made on it. Okay, and then following the lines that I had made, I have replicated sort of the average color in each area and that has a lot of room for differences of perception and opinion. So um, to my mind, oh so I could get rid of this glare, in this area here it's very dark green with light green and medium green as well. So it's like black, dark green, medium green, so I'm going to go for medium dark green that sort of could be everywhere in there. And then for, same for this area down here, and then this area here is overall a lemon yellow. The only area we're not going to exactly do that with is the sky. You can see here that the sky is showing through right down to here and through here. So instead of making this a purple stripe and then a yellow stripe and then a sky colored stripe, I'm going to bring the sky color right down to here because it's necessary for the sky to appear to be the background and not have leaves poking through from behind the sky. They really have to sit on top and then these trunks have to sit on top of that as well. So for the sky color, which it doesn't matter what order you do these in because they're all there's no layers at this point. Uh, we will get into doing layers on top in a bit. Well, the next stage. Okay, so for this, you're going to need more or less eight colors. Um, you need cadmium red for sure, which is an orange red, and a magenta, preferably a dark one, which is a purple red and an orange yellow. So we have two yellows, an orange yellow and a lemon yellow, orange yellow and lemon yellow, an orangey red which is red and sort of a crimson color called magenta and a black and a white and a blue and a phthalo blue. Phthalo is spelled P-T-H-A-L-O and it's kind of a turquoisey blue once it's watered down a bit. Okay, so uh, we had mixed the sky already and put it in. When you put the sky in, any brush stroke will do. It doesn't matter because it's behind everything. So just have fun with it. And then um, this area here, I wanted you to see, you can see this area here is sort of a purple, blue, gray. This computer won't show it, but it is a purple, blue, gray. Try and get closer, see if you can see that. Not just gray. Anyway, so to make that up, 
that, you can see if I've emphasized the blue, that's because that's the way I see it. You may want to emphasize purple or however you want to see it. So if you want this color, you just take your ultramarine blue here, add a bit of white, ultramarine blue, add a bit of white, dull it down. You can use a bit of black to dull it down if you like, or uh, orange color here, and that's good enough. And then do it this way. And again, it doesn't matter at this point what brush stroke you want to use. Okay, so for this area, which is very similar to this one and this one, you can see in our landscape, oh, this glare, there, that it is a dark, almost black with lighter green and medium green on it. And same with this one and also in here. Okay, so you can make a green, either the green you have or a blue and a yellow mixed together. And mixing the blue and the yellow together, uh, add some black to darken it up. If it's still kind of limey as opposed to a nature green, then add a speck of red, because that will dull it down, but really not too much. Okay, now for these ones, again, um, a happy mess is fine. Just put the color in. There's only a few areas where it actually makes a difference what kind of brush stroke you might use. And one of them is this area here. And that's because there are sideways lines through it. You can see those shadow lines coming through there, going sideways. So you need to mix up an intermediate color in there, which is sort of a muted orange. And um, any red, any yellow, and then um, you could add a bit of black to knock it down, or maybe a bit of blue to dull it out a bit. And then possibly use side to side brush strokes, but it doesn't really matter at this stage. Again, we're going to be painting more layers over top. Some of this will show through though, so uh, side to side layers is not a bad idea. And then um, in the sky, we can just start to put a bit of those yellow colors that are going to come in over top. And here I just use pure black because it's so dark. So um, have fun doing that. Feel free to stop the video and have a look and see what I did. Or you can change it to what you think is more the case. I'll give you another shot of this if you want to stop on the actual photo. But the colors in this video are not the best, I have to say. Then I tilt it so you can see the color better. Anyway, so you can stop it there too. Let me move closer. And have a good look at this. It's actually very pretty and quite vibrant. Okay, good luck with that, and I will be back to start the layers on top. You can let all this dry. Okay, so we are ready for our next step. Now, one thing that's really important when you're trying to paint on top of acrylic paint is um, if you're painting dark over light, it's relatively easy, just like painting a wall in your house. If you're trying to paint dark over light, it should work. But uh, if you're trying to paint light over dark, you can run into difficulty because the color underneath might show through. So what to do in this case is either use super thick paint or two coats or another option is to paint, say you wanted a white stripe here, you could paint that area white first and then put the color on top. The easiest is to use thick paint. Sometimes uh, thickening it up, if you add a bit of white, that will make it more opaque but it also lightens the color, so there's a fine line there. Okay, so we are going to start in with our second layer of paint here. I'm going to put my water there. And what we're going to do in the end is each of these areas is one sort of middle color 
and we're going to turn each of these into a dark, medium, and light of that color. So this is going to be dark, medium, light green, dark, medium, light orange, dark, medium, light yellow, dark, medium, light purple back there, except for the sky, which in this case is so subdued and in the background that we don't have to do that. But anything in the foreground that has form to it will need a dark, medium, light. The change from the dark and the medium to the light is what gives it its form or its 3D-ness. So we're going to be doing that and then also adding extra colors. Now when I paint, I tend to paint around in circles, but I'll try to keep it logical. But the creative process is not always logical. Oh, I forgot white. Just a minute. Okay, to show you how to do this, we can focus on this yellow area to here because it's fairly straightforward. So at the bottom it's darker and then the dark comes in and out here and then it's lighter and the medium color we already have on there. So we're going to add some white areas up here. Um, sort of see through because the yellow will come through. And darker areas down here. Okay, so we're starting with the same colors that we had before. The two yellows, two blues, and two reds, black and white. So to mix up a dark yellow, we had lemon yellow already in there. So we're now we're going to switch to cadmium. And I'm adding a bit of red. There are a lot of ways to go about making this color. So you can be somewhat subjective. As long as you get a nice dark yellow. Now dark yellow can turn green or brown. So you can see my kind of a burnt dark yellow here. Which burnt dark yellow is. So, okay, that color will work. So I can come in from the bottom and sort of where... Could go darker actually. I'm going to add a bit more blue to darken it up. And a bit more red. Now you can see I've got gone too far. I have to bring more yellow back into the mix. So if you have a bit of trouble mixing your color, it's very you're in good company. Okay, so now I have a thick dark yellow. I've used a lot of paint and I can come in from the bottom. I hope you can see that this color is interspersed here. So just by using my brush, I'm using a brush and using both the side and the flat of it, sort of like this and like this, to get that color in there. And it comes up in here. And there. Okay, so that's good for that. Let's go even darker in some of the darks. Down here it can be even darker. And in this case, I'm actually going to add a bit of green because it's dark green yellow. Eesh. And some black. You're probably going to find the color mixing the most frustrating, but as long as you've got a dark, medium, and light yellow, good enough. And I do teach color mixing as well. You will need it at some point. Unless you want to buy lots and lots of tubes of paint of every color, which some people actually do. So I'm coming in with an even darker color here with a hint of green. I think I can go darker and again. I'm going to add more black for down at the bottom. See how dark it goes here? So. Now some of these top leaves are defined not so much by the leaves themselves by that, but by that dark behind. So I'll bring that in at the same time. See how that background gets really dark against these leaves here. And that's what makes, gives the leaves their shape. So while I have the color, you'll find out that acrylic dries super quickly. So you want to use up the color that you have rather than waste it. Because if you don't use it, it'll just dry up and become useless. And if you're on a budget at all, 
or budget conscious, and most artists are, then uh, then you'll want to use it up. Okay. Okay, so that's kind of... So I've got a dark medium and medium light, and I'm going to go with an actual light on the tips of those up here. See where there's sort of white coming in? So... I'll mix it with a bit of lemon yellow because it's not out and out white. It's close to white. Okay, so along the very tips where the sun is hitting it, I can bring some light in down here. Okay, so that's how... Oops, that's not rough enough. That's how you could do the bush. So every area we're going to do that too. Dark, medium, light, dark, medium, light. And sort of adding very variations of colors. The adding the variations of colors to make it easier can be done at the end. I kind of can't help myself from doing it at the time because I see it. But to make it easier for yourself, if you just do dark, medium, light, green. And you can mix up your dark, medium, light, green first. And if you want an extra light, you can go for that too. So dark, medium, light, green. Mix it up ahead of time so that you can come in and do it. We'll do this green area together. But it's very hard to see the darks and mediums and lights, I think, with this camera but it's light here going in almost black there not a, not a heck of a lot of light there's some there and some there light doesn't really hit it okay so we've got the overall color here already so we need to lighten up the sort of tips and darken up down there so we're going to need a dark medium light green I'll try not to add any extra colors and um, we already have a dark green from here so we'll just darken that up. It's very similar to the color we already have. I'm going to darken it up even more. Just using out and out black can make for a really boring or sort of a flat patch in your painting. So try to add some color to your black at the very least. Like in this case, some green to your black. I'm adding red, which will really dull it down. It's a very dull color. Uh, red and green together make it for a dull, dark dull. Okay, this might not be thick enough. No. You don't know when it's on here if it's the right color. It's when you put it on here that you realize. That's another good reason for not having the canvas just white. Because against this white here, it looked like the right color. But once it's against this green, it's like, oh, it's not dark enough. But compared to the white, of course it is. So that's why it's a really good idea to get these colors in to give you an idea of both the color and the tone. I'll do a lesson on tone separately. But we're sort of including it in here. That's where the dark, medium, and light create the form. It's just as important as color and they're both separate and not separate. Okay, so I'm bringing some of these darks in. I have to go darker yet for it to show up because it's so close to black. More black, more red, a bit of that yellow to bring the green out. There. And it comes in a bit of a layer, yeah, like that. It comes up in here. And you start to see these trunks coming out. Okay, so we want we want our light for the green. So um, lemon yellow is going to turn out probably lighter than cadmium. So I'll add white to lemon and add just a bit of phthalo blue. Okay, so we want our lights. There aren't very many. That's too light. Once again, you don't know until you get it on there if it's the right color or not. So I'm darkening it up. A bit of light in there. Light here. Maybe there. I think some of that is too obvious. We'll probably have to darken it up later. But it gives you the idea of dark, medium, light and how that the dark tends to go behind the light and then the light comes out. Okay, so that can be... I am going to mush it up just a bit because I think it looks more like a bush. There. Okay. So this green area is similarly dark, medium, light. 
Now the whole thing, dark, medium, light, dark, medium, light, seems to be on a slant, except it's this way, it's the other way. So we're just going to do it the way we see it, but simplify what we're seeing. So there's a whole cacophony of colors in here, but we want to simplify it into, if we squint, we can probably see a sort of stripe of dark and a stripe of light maybe medium here. Dark, medium, light. So, so we're going to do that. That is a very nice green. So I'm using the cadmium, cadmium yellow this time to warm it up. More cadmium. It's a bit minty. Maybe this other blue too. Okay, that's not too bad. Like that. Okay, that's this green, so I'm gonna put some of that color interspersed. And here and here and here. I almost already have that color in there. Okay, and then straight for the light part in that green, it's almost a straight cadmium yellow mixed with orange. So, cadmium yellow, I'm going to add some white. And just a tech speck of red. Let's just see if this works. Yeah, that'll be fine. It's a bit insipid but we don't have to be perfect to start with because with acrylic paint you can always paint right over top and improve improve what you've been working on okay so coming up with some lights through here and down across the top here now that is a different color it's a yellow but i'm not sure that it's actually lighter we do want it to be lighter so i'm going to up the white if you look at these the tones are not really lighter it's more of a different color so I'm upping the light white and that is too much. So coming back in with the color over top again. There, that's better. Remember I was saying you could always paint white under if you wanted it lighter. That's an example of doing that. You can do that all across the back here too. Add some white and paint that color on top. Okay, and then for the darks, it's almost this color here again even though it's yellow it's close to black okay so we can start with the green we already made add some black to it you could add blue if you wanted to if you felt it was more blue or you could add more red okay so just to come in here coming up from this plant that's too dark so I'm going to lighten it up I still got a bit of an orange in there. Oof. Got out and out red here now, which I didn't necessarily want, but it's not that, no, it's too red. Okay, that's fine. And then right behind this light here, it goes super dark, coming up into here. So we're just trying to Ferret out the lights, mediums, and darks. So I'm just going to go over into here. Behind that bush, it's super dark again. Behind this bush, it, that green is super dark. So coming in there. Super dark in here. One like there. And a bit darker here. And across behind that as well. Coming down from that stripe. And a bit down here. Okay. Okay, try to do the next two areas on your own, which would be here and here, by noticing the dark, darker areas, and the medium areas. So dark, 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 medium medium maybe medium and you already have this color and then add those lights on top 
And in here, it's mostly dark, so you have to go darker over here. And then these are pretty much this color. So you're going to paint around them and then just add some tips of light on the edges. So I'll give you a close-up of the painting to look at. You might want to see if you can freeze it so that you have a good look at it and try that. And if you're not able to, then just wait and check when I've done it what it's supposed to look like and you can just do that. Okay, I'm going to go for... Okay, there's a close-up of the photo which should help you seeing the dark medium light in the path here. That's particularly light right there. If you squint, that really helps. So dark, medium, light, dark, medium. The medium is already there, so you're just adding the dark and the light. Same here. You've got the medium color here. You're going to add the dark coming in around it, and then maybe outline a couple of those leaves with the light. So try that on your own. If you get completely stuck, then I'll do it and you'll see what it's supposed to look like. This part we're going to leave because it's a little more complex till after we're done this. And don't put these trunks in yet. You can put them in up to about here if you want. But otherwise leave it because the sky is another issue altogether. Okay, see you soon. Hi, so, got a kitty cat here. So I've done these two parts and I'll explain what you need to know. Now this one here was actually quite difficult to do with starting with the medium and putting the dark on after and then the lights. And that's because the medium area areas are so small and detailed that it's almost easier to paint the whole thing black and then put these on. If we do it that way though, we have to remember to use super thick paint to go on over top or add some white to it. So I did do it the way that I had said, which is to have the medium color and then come around with the black. And it wasn't that hard. You just have to, you just have to simplify these areas of medium into more or less stripes. You can see that's a stripe there, that's a stripe there, and that's a stripe there. And they're stripes but with jaggy edges. So that's what I've done here. Left the stripe with the jaggy edges and painted around it. Now that's actually a bit harder to do than the other way around. So if you did find it hard, then the other way is to take a super dark black, no super dark green, by adding black to the green and paint the whole thing dark. And once that's dry, which doesn't take long, then you can make a medium green as you had before. So that would be um, probably this blue, but either blue is fine, plus one of the yellows. If it's too bright, add the other blue or the other yellow, and then add some black to it. Um, and maybe some red, just to dull the whole thing down. Cover the whole area, and then, um, you know, then to make the lighter one, you can take uh, cadmium yellow or the other yellow and add some blue to it. Now that's too bright so I'm going to add the other blue. That's not going to show up on our black. Well, sort of is. But as it dries it's going to fade in. So we need to add some white to it. So we're going to add some white to it. I'm adding some white to the color so that it will show up. That white will make it sort of opaque. So it will stand like that. See the difference? So then you can use that to paint over top of the black and it will show up. See if I paint that here how that will show up. So uh, if I wanted to I could come in and do some of these edges while I add up these extra light edges. So I'm sort of painting the leaf shapes. This brush isn't the best for it. Painting these leaf shapes at the edge here. coming with my finger. So that makes those ones stand out because they're quite bright in front here. I saw another spot over here that needed a bit of lightening up too. There. Get that extra light on those, the top edge of those bushes there. Okay, so that's how you do that. 
Okay, so that all looks pretty good. Now the temptation is to start putting these trunks in, but we still can't because we have to do a little more work up here before we put the trunks in so that we don't have to paint around them in the end, which we absolutely don't want to do. Now, you could, but you would find it difficult. I like to go with whatever is easiest. Okay, so we're going to work on this yellow up here. We have started it. The sky's fine. It's the right color. It drops into the background like we want it to. Okay, so to mix up the yellow for the leaves, it's this cadmium yellow. It's a very bright yellow on the orangey side. I'm going to add a bit of red to it just to make it even more orangey and also a bit of white. Okay, so we started it. What we're trying to do here is get the idea of these scattered leaves. You kind of have to do by feel. So, in looking at this, this glare is enough to drive a person crazy. Most every patch of bright yellow sort of has a burnt orange brown around it. So, yellow, burnt orange brown, yellow surrounded by burnt orange and brown. We've got some of the yellow, some of the lightest yellow, we're coming in with sort of a medium yellow, and then we're going to go for that dirt, burnt orange brown color. This doesn't have to be overly accurate. This has to give the idea. So I'm not painting any leaf shapes, just patches of colors. And they're jiggity jaggedy, so that they'll give the idea of leaves and also allow for the light in the sky to show through. I don't want to paint it solid. And following what I see is the main shapes, like there's a patch here, there's a patch here. So I am doing what I'm seeing, but loosely. So this color comes all the way over to here, behind these trees. Doesn't matter if you get it all that accurate. Okay, there's just a bit up and around here, not that much. After that, we want to come in with that dark orangey color. That's kind of enough of that so far. So the dark orangey color, we can just stick with that same color. Add more red, more yellow. I'm gonna add black, let's see what that does. That's not right. So I'm gonna add some more red. That's close. Sort of a burnt orangey yellow. It's almost the color down here. Okay, well, I think I'm going to add some white to it because it's not as intense as this color. It's a little bit less so. No, that's too much white. I can try that. That's probably about right. Might not be. Okay, so around these areas, I can see that might be a bit harsh. So I want to sort of soften that up a bit not get too crazy with the putting the paint on. So it sort of comes down in a stripe across here, from here over to here, a lot up here, coming up very lightly in through there, pretty thick through here, and down there, behind these trunks, between all this, not so much sky soaring through here, so we can get pretty thick with it. In fact, almost no sky. Come down into this purple color. Every once in a while, stand back from what you're doing. In fact, the more often you do it, the better. And see how it's looking. I'm gonna bring that into here up into here, that's up here, doing that a bit, make sure we got lots of space for that white to show through, this is pretty solid here, coming down into the purple, not much white showing through, okay, this color does come through here, but more in behind, quite a little bit, since I've got it on my brush, Okay, I'm going to bring some of that up. From, see this little patch of that color down there? We can put that in while we're at it. Same color, but a little bit more white. 
just that one little spike there. Well, it's kind of the right color. Okay, so that's all right. Now, we need some lights. Some of these leaves down here have lights on them, so I'm just going to put those lights coming in. That's just white. It'll show up sort of transparent. That's not the sky, so we want this to be heavier paint because you want the sky can fade behind but this paint here has to show up as foreground paint so a little more a little thicker than the sky color okay so that's all right then we can start putting the trunks in at least on this side and see where it goes maybe we'll still have to do a little more work in there but that's very striped because it is a series of trunks back there so we'll go with it's still trunks, so we have to go with trunks now. So to make that trunk color, it's pretty much black. But I'm not going to use straight black, because again, it will sort of put a hole in the painting. The color black, I'm going to add red. A bit of white, not much. That gives us kind of a gray, which is not that great. So I'm going to add some yellow. Okay, we can try that. Now, loosely, I'm going to put one of these trunks in. I can put a few in. Light touch here. We can go definitely go darker later, but we don't want to have to paint over that sky. So, we sort of want to get an idea of where these trunks are. Use the same method that we did when we were drawing of saying, okay, where does it come from or where is it going to? And then mentally or and then actually do it. So we can simplify this trunk pattern too. It doesn't have to be as many trunks as we actually see. Okay, so that's very light. It's not as heavy as the trunks are. Uh, I'm soon going to have to switch to a smaller brush. So this guy here, uh, we can go ahead with him too. He's coming out of this bush and going almost straight. And again, not thick. We'll, we'll make, need to make them thicker, but not yet because we want to get a feel for where they are first. If you go in too strong and you have to fix it, then that's very hard to do. Okay, that's that guy. This guy. And there's a big dark swath back there, which does seem to be a trunk. So, put that in. Okay, so we're starting to see our trunks. That's good. This is a trunk, and then it comes up into some dark areas coming into here. So we may as well do that while we're here. Okay, so that trunk doesn't stop in the middle of nowhere. Now this dark up in here has got to come up too. So put that there. Start bringing some trunks up from it. Okay. That looks good. So if it didn't look good, it would be very easy to paint around, paint over that or around. This trunk seems to come right down through here. So I'm going to see if it's still dark down there. I'm just going to bring it down further. Okay, looks great. Next step, I'm going to come into this green and purple area a bit. We're not going to deal with those yet any further. They're both broken up by stripes of dark and light, which are many, many trunks back there. I'm going to switch to a smaller brush. And all I need to do is bring some dark, darks down in through here and some lights also. Or darks up into the yellow more. Darks up into the yellow and then lights down into that. Okay, so those, those darks that are going up there aren't black. They're, they're like a deep moss green. So we can start with our black that we were using and lighten it up a bit, maybe a bit of white. You can see that's not the right color. So we're going to add some green to it. That's too yellow, a little bit of blue, a little bit more blue, more, not too much. That's not too bad. Now let's see if it actually shows up because we're painting over top of another color. So coming out of this moss green, 
we're bringing some trunks up. Not quite dark enough, so more black. The further you go, the easier it is to judge colors against what you've already got and shapes against what you've already got. Okay, that, that color works. So we'll loosely again. That's almost too hard. I'm going to take a bit of that off. Put in some of these sort of trunk shapes. Again, putting not as many as we actually see. Just the sort of idea of trunks going up here. And they end in a bit of a dark line right there. As in front of which there aren't really any more trunks. There's a trunk going this way. Another trunk going that way. Trunk. No water. So light. We have to do it fairly light. Here, here. Lots of trunks coming up into this yellow. And then even up into here. You can see they're continued up into there a bit. So we'll continue some up in here between those leaves. Right up.